you know, you've made some mistakes in your past. You haven't always made the right decisions, no matter how, especially if you're somebody that you, you're no longer doing that, you know, you're on the right path, you know, just know that God, you know, whatever doors that are closed on you because of the past decisions that you made, just know that God will still open other doors, especially, you know, if you're living for him, especially if you're striving to do the right thing, God will open those doors. But unfortunately, hey, what's going on, family? Hope you guys are doing well. Thank you once again for hopping on the podcast. Listen, I pray that you guys had a great holiday week last week. I pray that you enjoyed your time off from work. If you had time off, enjoy with your family, rest it, whatever it is that you decided to do. But I just want to say thank you for jumping on the podcast this week. This week, I wanted to share a story about something that happened to me within the last week. And the reason why I want to share the story is because it kind of caught me off guard. It kind of threw me for a loop a little bit because it was something that has not happened in a very long time. And just to give you some background on the story, I know on the podcast or on my YouTube channel, you know, what we mainly talk about is the Lord, right? We talk about the Bible. I sometimes share some of my testimonies and things that I've been through in the past, but I've rarely, rarely ever really shared, you know, how much of a sports fan I am, right? You know, I've been a Lakers fan, 49ers fan, you know, in football and a Yankees fan in baseball since I was a teenager. So for all three of those teams, basketball, football, baseball, I've probably been a fan of all of those teams for like over 30 years, right? So recently, my wife, uh, my birthday's coming up on December 6th, and my wife, she came and said, listen, you know, I think she told me like a month ago, like, listen, you know, I'm going to let you know early. I got some tickets to the Philadelphia Eagles and 49ers game for your birthday, which is the, the game is coming up on December 3rd. And those of you that are football fans, you know, this is going to be a huge game for so many different reasons. Right. And I'm not even going to dig into that. But if you are a football fan or you watch football, you know why. So this is definitely probably the game to be at because it's just so many um just so much, so much behind this game. Right. But anyway, she lets me know that, you know, um, she had booked uh, tickets to go to the game. And it's kind of funny because when she told me that, you know, I just kind of laugh within myself because a little over a year ago, my wife did not watch football. Right. But last year for the first time, um, I was able to, uh, finally go to a home game. You know, I kept saying it over the years. Now, mind you, I've been a, a 49er fan for 30 years, and I kept saying, listen, I got to get out to Cali to see the game. And now, you know, they're in Levi Stadium. They're no longer in Candlestick. That's when I started watching them. But, you know, they're in Levi Stadium now. But I'm like, nevertheless, I, I wish I could have got out to Candlestick. But I got to get to, you know, a home 49er game. I want to be able to look around the stadium and see all my peoples out there. And last year was the first time that I was able to do that. Um, and I just kind of procrastinated over the years. You know, one year I said, oh, this is the year. But last year I said, you know what? As soon as they allow the tickets to be bought, I'm going to just go ahead and book it, book the flight and do everything um, so I don't talk myself out of it. So when I did that, I did it for my wife and I, um, you know, because for one, we wanted to spend some time out in San Francisco, you know, for a couple of days and then, you know, go to the game, you know, so it'd be like a little getaway for us as well. So mind you, my wife did not watch any football up until that point. So when I told her a couple months earlier, she was like, well, you know, what do I do, you know, at the game? You know, I said, well, when you see all of us jump up, you jump up too. You know, I was just messing with her. But listen, when I tell you she jumped into just watching, you know, football, you know, she, she would be watching games on her own and stuff like that. And she just started to love it. And then watching the 49er games leading up to it, you know, that was even, you know, she was even loving that even more. So now she's all in. I'm talking about to the point of, you know, once we go to the game, I take her to the game. It's like she's like 70 percent, 80 percent knowledge of what's going on. You know, she's all in. She's cheering. She's jumping up at the right time. Uh, so after we went to that game, it was like it was nothing else you could say to her. Right. She's she's all she's all 49ers, gold helmet nation, all of that. So, um you know, when she told me she booked the tickets, I kind of laughed with them myself because I was like, well, bro, maybe it's not just for my birthday. Maybe it's for your birthday, too, which her birthday is past. But, you know, just kind of messing with her. But anyway, you know, she got the tickets and, you know, 
I was like, let me just go ahead and book the room. Um, you know, instead of waiting to the last minute, um, I went through IHG, which I normally use. And this just seems like lately, if those of you that have to get hotel rooms every now and then, it just seemed extremely high. So I said, you know what? Um, I just went out to Philly with some friends and we stayed in the Airbnb. Now that was my first time staying in the Airbnb and shout out to my boys, Jay Hutch, my boy, Carl Robinson. And for those of you really quickly, for those of you that love to cook, you know, my boy, Carl Robinson, he has a channel called cooking and grilling with Carl on YouTube. I'll put a link in the description. If you're watching this on YouTube, my boy, Jay Hutch also has a channel uh, called food fanatic uh, TV. And that's spelled fanatic is spelled F-U-N, like as like as in fun. Um, but both of them, uh, they do food reviews, um, you know, cooking and grilling with Carl, my boy Carl. He's been a chef for many, many years. I've known him for many years. I actually known Carl from the world before either one of us got saved. Um, he's been a chef for like 30 years. We were best men at each other's wedding. So this is like my really, really close friend. He has a channel where he cooks all types of, you know, meals from burgers to salmon to shrimp. You know, it, it can be, you know, real elegant and it could just be real, you know, uh, uh, just kind of like fun foods. Right. So if you're into cooking, my boy, Jay Hutch, he does a lot of reviews. He does cooking also. Um, I think he just put up like a sweet potato pie uh, recipe. So these guys really go in. So we actually went to Philly one to fellowship together. Right. Because I had never met John and that that's a whole nother story, how him and Carl met and how we all, you know, how I became friends with John through Carl. But anyway, I'm gonna have both of their links in the description where you can check out their channels. Awesome channels. But we go out to Philly for a fellowship and they also went out there to do some food reviews um, at some of the different, you know, uh, Philly cheesesteaks. For those of you know, Philly is famous for cheesesteaks. So you got Geno steaks, you got Pat's uh, King of the Steaks. So, you know, they went around hitting different spots doing that. You got the Red and Terminal Market. They did some food reviews in there. So we had an awesome and fun time. So when I started thinking back to the Airbnb we stayed in, it was super nice. And that was my first time staying in the Airbnb. I never thought of renting an Airbnb before. It was just, you know, I always just kind of rented like a hotel room when my wife and I went somewhere or my wife and, you know, and the kids or my mom or whatever. I just always just kind of rented a hotel room. So I said, you know what? You know, the Airbnb seemed to be a lot cheaper. And I, you know, I really enjoyed the one that we stayed in. It was very nice inside. You know, everything was laid out. It, it was beautiful. So I said, you know what? Let me go ahead and just try to rent an Airbnb instead of trying to uh, rent an expensive hotel room through IHG. So I put, I go in the app, pick the place, pay, pay for the room, uh, pay, you know, pay for the uh, apartment uh, for my wife and I to stay in for the day. And lo and behold, I get a, a message like maybe 24 hours later, 48 hours later that I had been denied because of my record. And it kind of threw me for a loop because I, I haven't been in trouble, you know, the stuff, especially the stuff that they had on the paper. Um, that was like 30 years ago, almost 30 years ago. And some of the stuff I didn't even recognize. So I was like, you know, what's this about? And I'm not going to lie. I, I wasn't really mad and I wasn't really disappointed. I think I was a little bit more offended than anything. And, and, and this is the reason why it's because from back then into now, I've worked various jobs where my background had to be ran. You know, um, I was able to start a couple of businesses, never really had an issue. Um, you know, uh, rented, you know, cars, rented hotel rooms, you know, rented different things and just never really had this issue. So I was a little bit offended. And another reason why I was a little bit offended is because, like I said, when we stayed in Philly, the Airbnb was immaculate, was immaculate. It was very nice. But these Airbnbs are not always in the greatest of places. So when we came out the Airbnb that morning, it was like a lady across the street. You could tell she she got high. You know, she was a little naughty. It was, you know, people kind of roaming around, you know, uh, you know, just kind of a little iffy, you know, that, you know, that you might want to watch yourself with. And even the Airbnb that I booked when I was reading through the comments, the Airbnb itself had a high rating, right? Like a 4.9. But what I was seeing in the comments was they were saying, well, if you had to come back at night that you might want to take an Uber or something, because, you know, 
the the area is not that great. And I wasn't really sweating that, right? I mean, been through a lot. The Lord has kept me. I really wasn't sweating that. My wife and I were driving from Connecticut to there in our car. So it is, I'm not really worried about that like that. But the fact that they have these Airbnbs in places like that and they're running records, you know, um, you know, 30 years old and denying, you know, me the right to rent the Airbnb. I was like, man, you know, it, it, it just kind of really threw me for a loop. But nonetheless, you know, I didn't really sweat it. They they said to me, uh, you can either, um, I guess, uh, you know, dispute what the company found, which, like I said, some of the stuff I didn't really recognize. I could dispute what the company found and appeal with Airbnb. I could either do both or do either one. So I didn't even go through the whole dispute with the company type of thing because I already know what type of process that's going to be. And it to me, it wasn't really that serious. You know what I mean? So I did send in something for the appeal. And basically what I said was, was like, listen, first of all, this stuff is like 30 years old. Uh, the stuff that I recognize on here is like 30 years old. I said, secondly, you know, I've never been, you know, I've never had my record ran or especially something pulled up that long ago for doing anything. You know what I mean? Renting stuff, getting a contract uh, through working or through my business, whatever. Um, and I was like, it was just my wife and I would just come in. They, they ask you to upload pictures and do all these things. So I uploaded a picture of my wife and I'm like, we're just coming to see the Eagles and 49ers game. You know, I don't really know what the big deal is, but I didn't get nasty. Wasn't upset about it. You know, um, definitely was a little offended about it. Um, and I, I guess maybe a little disappointment, but I didn't really feel disappointed. And maybe that's because there's other alternatives for me, you know, to stay out there to rent or maybe just have my wife rent the Airbnb. So I wasn't really, you know, discouraged or really worried about that. So I just said what I had to say. And they like sent an email back wanting me to just do all of these different things, like go get the records and go get places I rented from. And I was like, you know, like rented places or home owned from. And I was like, nah, it's not that serious, you know? And it, it would, it just added a little bit more to the offense because I'm like, why would I have to do all of that? And, and, and here's, here's another thing that's, that's kind of crazy. Um, I've been buying some things lately because I do want to start sharing on the channel. I want to get out and about and do some recording because I do want to start sharing on the channel some of the things that I did go through back then, some of the things that I did, some of the things I went through, like really dig into my testimony, right? So what I did in the process of doing that, I went down to the police station um, where I would end up when I would get arrested before I would have to go to county jail or go up the way, as they call it, to prison or whatever have you. I went to the police station where you know, the, the city where I grew up in and where I got arrested, you know, multiple times in, and they couldn't even find half of the stuff that, you know, I had on my record. Some of the stuff was whited out. Some of the stuff was taken off, I guess, after a certain amount of times, like, like after a certain amount of time, they have to get rid of certain things, white it out. I don't know. The guy was explaining to me because what I wanted was I wanted some of my police reports if I could find it because to be honest, some of the things that happened back then, yes, I was guilty of doing, but I wanted to share how like some of the police reports, they wasn't really accurate. And and it was a point to it. It wasn't really nothing to, to go against the police, but it was something that I wanted to share, you know, with those that are coming up, living the lifestyle that I used to live. Like, you know, when you're in the streets, like there, there are no rules, you know, you always hear this thing about um, playing by the rules, no snitching, no doing this. But listen, the, the thugs not playing by by the rules, the gang members not playing by the rules, and sometimes the cops are not playing by the rules. So that's why I wanted that. And I also wanted my mug shots because I wanted people to see how I was then, especially when I went through different phases, especially when I went through the phase of losing my mind because I lost my mind. For those of you that, that are just listening to this podcast, I lost my mind smoking PCP. And I'm getting ready to dig into some of those stories because a lot happened in those two years when I went through that and got where God showed up miraculously. I'm talking about things you wouldn't believe. Right. So that me going down there a month ago, I already know how that's going to turn out. And to me, I just didn't feel that there was a point for me to run around and go crazy trying to find all these things just to rent an Airbnb in an area where it's not the greatest anyway. Right. But 
you know, I, they, they sent that. I never really responded. I said what I had to say, never heard back or, uh, never heard a response back from them, which was cool, but it did bring me to this though, because like I told you guys, I had started a business, another business recently, a transport business, been driving, um, you know, for years, you know, I started out driving for different companies, box trucks, all that stuff over the years. But I had been using my own car to do different jobs over the last seven years. But this year I decided to start a transport business. And I have an uncle that has a transport business and my cousins, his sons, they kind of running and we were just kind of talking. Um, you know, they were just kind of dropping some um some some game on me on, you know, you know, what it is I need to do, what it is I need to get to help, you know, uh, me to get loads and stuff. Right now I'm working on getting a high roof cargo van. Like that's my goal. So that's where I am now. So I was getting information from them on that. And, you know, one of my cousins was saying that, listen, you know, um, if you got any felonies on your record, you know, you might want to try to get that expunged. Now, people have been telling me for so many years to get my record expunged. But the reason, honestly, guys, why I didn't is because I'm not going to say me not having an expunge haven't held me back from anything, because obviously we can see with the whole Airbnb, Airbnb situation. And then, yeah, I mean, it, it was a problem early on, like, years, like a few years after I had gotten in trouble, you know, when, when that seven years, when they asked you, uh, have you been in trouble in the last seven years? I will say then it was kind of, a, of an issue where it would pop up, but through the grace of God, I still would get jobs, still would be able to get into places. So God has just been on my side. He's been awesome to me, all of that. But there are times where it was brought up and people was like, oh, we don't know cool, but it never really stopped me. You know, when that door closed, God opened up another one. So that's why I guess I never really thought about getting it expunged. But when I was talking to my cousin, he was saying, even in the trucking, um, in the transportation game, sometimes you run into that, which once again, I'm somewhat surprised, especially if it's something from so long ago, but that, that I would be more, um, willing to go and run around and grab this and grab that because to me that's a lot more important right that's my business that's how i'm going to provide for my family that's something i'm trying to set up for the long term so on and so forth so you know i'm thinking about just going ahead and looking into getting my record expunged but the weird thing is here in connecticut um supposedly they passed some type of law or or something i think ned lamont put something in the place where if you had felonies so many years ago that they were expunged, that they were wiped off. But evidently, you know, because when I looked up my name, I didn't see anything, but evidently that's not the case because it's still popping up somewhere. So I don't know if there's something else I need to do to get it off or if I just need to get it expunged. But whatever the case may be, guys, I think I might go ahead and look into this process because, um, you know, unfortunately, people do hold you, you know, to your past, even though your past is your past and you may not be that type of person um, that you used to be. And look, I, you know, on in defense of Airbnb, I, I understand that whole running the record process because look, everybody that had a record or did things in the past don't mean that they're not doing them today. I get that, but I definitely was a a little surprised because of what it was that it was ran for. Because when once I got that email, I just kind of started, because like I said, I never really thought about renting an Airbnb in the past. I went with my friends. We had an excellent time, great experience. So I said, well, you know, maybe I'll try to rent one. I just was out there anyway. So I never really dug into the Airbnbs or, you know, what they were about or what was happening with them. So when this happened, I just started going online and just kind of looking up stuff. And I'm I'm seeing all these crazy stories of people doing crazy things. And I'm like, well, if you guys are running records like this, are these people that don't have a record that's doing all this? Because I'm like, if it is, you might want to give those of us that used to have a record a chance. But I'm like, you know, it, it is what it is, man. It's cool. Um, you know, I just, you know, I just had my wife uh, just go ahead and rent an Airbnb because, like I said, I'm tired of paying these prices to these hotels. Um, you know, and my last couple of experiences through IHG it was not great at all, but I just wanted to share that story because I mean, it really did 
catch me off guard. It, 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 you know, it threw me a little bit because I hadn't experienced that. And when I tell you a whole lot of years, I haven't experienced anything like that in years, but maybe it's just, you know, God confirming what people keep telling me about, you know, getting my record expunged. I know you can pay some people to, to, to do most of the process for you. Some things you got to do yourself. Maybe I'll go that route. Maybe I'll do it myself, but that's going to be my next goal. But, um, yeah, just, you know, if you're out there and, you know, you've made some mistakes in your past, you haven't always made the right decisions, no matter how, especially if you're somebody that you, you're no longer doing that, you know, you're on the right path, you know, just know that God, you know, whatever doors that are closed on you because of the past decisions that you made, just know that God will still open other doors, especially, you know, if you're living for him, especially if you're striving to do the right thing, God will open those doors. But unfortunately, you know, some people will hold your past against you. They will only look at your past and sometimes not even, you know, look at your future. Like I said, I get it. Airbnb wanted me to run around and grab all these things. But to me, I felt like for that, I felt like it wasn't worth it. And somebody out there might say, oh, well, you don't really want to want to rent there. I meant, yeah, maybe not, not, not to that degree, maybe not. But I will say for those of you, like I was talking about, you know, you may have a past and things of that nature. Look, it's sad that, you know, sometimes people hold us to that. Like I've had jobs, like I said, earlier on when I, when I was coming out of all of that stuff, cause I got saved in jail. Right. And I'm not going to go through that. I'll, 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 you know, uh, share that in, in future podcasts or whatever have you. And I've shared it in some of the old ones, but I got saved in jail. So when I finally got out of jail and came into the church that I'm in now, you know, I'm on a straight and narrow now. Right. I'm so I'm trying to get jobs. I'm trying to work. Not that I never had a job in the past when I was young, but now I'm 24, 25 years old trying to find jobs. And because I'm fresh out of the system and doing what it was that I was doing, sometimes it would come up and sometimes places would hire me. But it seems like they would just kind of keep an eye on me. But here's the thing that used to be so sad. They were keeping an eye on me. But the people that, quote unquote, didn't have a record, you know, they were stealing everything that wasn't tied down, right? They was doing all types of, you know, crazy things, but yet, you know, I was the one that, that they focused on because of a past mistake I made. And look, I get it. I understand. I'm not saying that they're wrong for doing it, but one thing we've learned in this country, it's like, you know, you make one mistake or a couple mistakes, people try to hold you to that for the rest of your life to the point of where I had a friend where he couldn't even, you know, he has a business, but he had to have somebody else, you know, sign up, you know, or, or, or have somebody else kind of be the, be the head of the business and, and sign everything up. And he kind of be like, a like lower in the business, you know, if you would, because of a past record, they had that, I think his is like 30 years ago, 20 something years ago. So, you know, it's just unfortunate that it's like that, but you know, I guess you got to play by the rules. So I guess expungement is the next best thing not to have to go through any of it again. But uh, I just wanted to share that, man. But I, I wanted to share all that to say that, listen, it happens, right? Like, you know, sometimes your past is going to pop up one way or another, whether it's through a record check or whether it's through somebody that knew you way back when. But guess what? If you're striving to do the Lord's will, you're striving to, to, to do the right thing. Maybe you're not saved, but you're striving to do the right thing. You know, you're walking on the straight and narrow and prayerfully, you know, you watching this podcast is saying that you are thinking about God and giving your life to God and things of that nature. If you are doing that, listen, God is going to He's going to work with you. He's going to lead and guide you. You don't have to worry about those doors that are closing. Don't get discouraged because there's times back then that doors closed on me and it, and it felt a little overwhelming. But God just kept saying, listen, trust in me. And that's why I haven't got my record expunged because I trusted in them. And from then until now, I never had to worry about a job or, you know, getting through doors uh, that I wanted to get through. And like I said, if it was a particular door that I didn't, a better one opened. So I just wanted to share a little bit, a little bit of that with you guys and just let you know that, listen, don't be discouraged. We all make mistakes um, no matter how long ago or how short. 
but God is still in control. But listen, know that I love you guys. I appreciate you joining the podcast uh, on this week. And yes, in a few days, I will be at that football game. And for those of you that are football fans, I'm telling you now, man, we tr- we the Niners are going to walk out with that W. But uh, but may the best man win. But um, yeah, we looking for this for this game for many different reasons. You football fans, you know what this is about. And um, we're looking to have a good time out there. Uh, don't get a chance to get away much, but um, my wife and I, you know, we're only going for a day, but we're going to try to enjoy it to the best of our ability. But know that I love you guys. And to the next time we hop on the podcast together, shalom.